PowerPoint that we've put together. So let's get right into it. So a couple of things I want to suggest uh, you do and be prepared for is as I'm going here, let me do this. Okay, here we go. Uh, number one, if I can ask you guys to get your full attention, look, whatever you got going on, if you're listening to this in an earpiece, if you're in your office, in your house, uh, in your home office, wherever you are, whatever you're doing is close out all the tabs that you have. Yes, share the screen. I uh, I think I am sharing the screen. So Zoom, uh, share screen here. Okay, over here. Okay, got it. So whatever you're doing, if I can ask you guys to close out all your other tabs, okay, don't go on Amazon and listen to this. Uh, uh, you know, the difference between myself when I was a guy that was coming up and I was on sessions like this or meetings like this, I was 100% in there because what else am I going to be doing? Why am I doing, why my part is meeting here? I want to learn to see if the content makes sense. And if it does, I want to positively change my life. So there's going to be a big difference between some of you guys that I have 10% of your attention versus some that are 30% of your attention, 50% of your attention versus some of you guys that are setting aside your phones, setting aside all the windows and you've got your paper and pen ready or your iPad ready to take notes and to engage in the chat, you're going to get more out of it. So I want to challenge you to do that while we're going through this. A couple other things for you to think about uh, what we'll talk about today is the difference between a market crash and a recession. We'll get into that. Why recessions are important, how to prepare for a market crash, how to make millions during and after a market crash. And just by you being on this webinar, if you've read Your Next Five Moves, uh, the book, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I fully live by is Shoshin mentality, which is constantly being a student, constantly wanting to learn and get better. So the thousands of you that are on right now with me on this uh, private webinar, you know, I want to applaud you for the fact that you are wanting to figure out a way to get better. Uh, it's not just you that wins, believe it or not. It's your family that wins, your husband, your wife, your kids that win, your peers, your employees, people who work with you that win. So more power to you for wanting to constantly position yourself to get ahead in the marketplace. I have a lot of respect for you for doing that. I believe the, the market crash will be here within the next six to 24 months. And the only reason I put 24 months is because the Fed has a way of delaying uh, this time bomb, but there's only so much you can delay so they can manipulate it for a while, but it's coming within the next six to 24 months. So either they're going to be making a decision to say, well, listen, it's coming. We have to get through this. There's nothing we can do about it. Or, oh my God, let's delay it a little bit. They may play politics. This is when somebody may call another person to say, don't raise the rates until after midterms and don't do this. Those types of things will happen. Politics will happen, but you cannot stop the market from happening. The market recession, market crash is coming, and you just have to brace for impact. But with the right tools that we'll talk about today, you'll be able to capitalize on some of the chaos. And hopefully for some of you, we wrote millions, but for some of you, maybe thousands and maybe 100,000, maybe a million bucks. I remember at a time where $10,000 was a lot of money for me. I remember at a time where $100,000 was a lot of money for me. But I also know many of you guys that are here who are uh, uh, business people who you've already made that kind of money. You want to figure out about how to even take it to the next level. And some of you are deeply concerned. Maybe you're in the real estate business. Maybe you're in, your, you're in industry that you're going to be directly impacted by this and you want to know how to prepare for it. We'll talk about that as well. So my market crash philosophy is very simple. When it happens, chase your next zero. If all you have right now is $10,000, over the next two years, you have to figure out a way to position yourself to add another zero to your 10 grand, which is $100,000 to your net worth. If you're worth $100,000 right now, chase the next zero, which is a million dollars. If you're a million dollars right now, chase the next zero, which is 10 million. And if you're 10 million, if you do it right, chase the next zero, you'll be able to have $100 million. A lot of billionaires will come out of it as well, people that are going to capitalize during these times. Next, recessions are a good thing for the marketplace. I'll explain to you why. And it's the best time to build wealth. Historically, we'll talk about this. Uh, those who have made extreme amount of wealth They've typically done it during times like this. They haven't done it during perfect times. They've done it during times where everybody else was afraid. They stayed poised. They had a strategy. They got ahead of everybody. Most people just waited saying, it's not going to come. It's not going to come. It's not going to come. And they were just being a little bit too either arrogant, too optimistic. They were not too paranoid enough to be ready for it. And they kind of missed it. And uh, we're going to see that happen as well. But those of you who are You'll benefit from it, and only the prepared will prevail. Very simple. 
One book that I talk a lot about is only the paranoid will survive. During the market crash, only the prepared will prevail. Uh, and, and let's not get it twisted. You know, a lot of times you'll see content. It's like, oh my gosh, go be an entrepreneur to be a millionaire and all this stuff. Everybody talks about all the fancy, easy, how easy life is to have the nice cars and the nice toys. And nobody wants to talk about the hard, but building a business is hard. Everybody goes to a wedding and sees how beautiful it is at a wedding, thinking that's how your marriage is going to be for the rest of your life. Let me tell you, marriage is hard. Everybody talks about and sees their friends holding a baby and how pretty they are at a photo shoot and how great it is. But I got a kid out there right now, my eight-year-old that's out there right now watching a different video. He's studying Kant today, philosopher. And guess what? Having kids is hard. Everybody, oh my God, you know, let's go, go out there in the market. So it's, everyone's going to make a lot of money. No, no, no. Surviving during the market crash and recession, it's hard. But if you do it right, you can raise good kids. If you do it right, you can have a healthy life. If you do it right, you can help make your marriage work. And if you do it right, you can win during times like this. So the key is to be ready for it. So again, for those of you guys that are on here with your paper, your pen, your iPad, ready to take notes, you close all the tab, you set your phone aside, you're willing to learn, you're ahead of the market because you're willing to learn and everybody else just watching Netflix right now or some kind of sports right now or TV right now, applaud you for doing this. So now, if you're ready to get started, put yes, I'll get right into it. Give us a yes. And we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, perfect. So let's get right into it. Few things. Um, that right there is how I capitalized off different market crashes. And my first one was accidental. That is a picture of me at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Uh, that is 2001. My first day at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter was 9-10, a day before 9-11. That's my cubicle. The girl in the back with the red shirt right next to the bright light, her name was Soul. She got 1560 on her SATs. It was a job interview between the two of us. And Dave Kirby, who hired us, she, he was going to give the job to only one of us. He says, I'll give it to both of you, but you guys have to share a computer together. And what you don't see to the right is that computer next to us. I have no clue what a 401k is at this time. No one in my family has ever had a 401k. I don't know what it is to have mutual funds. I don't know what it is to you know, live in a house or own a house. I've never lived in a house that my family owns. I'm coming from a very low income family. I can't even say middle income. It's low income family, welfare, food stamps, all that stuff. That's my life. So I'm entering an industry I know nothing about. Luckily, I'm good in math. So I passed my series seven and I got my licenses. But this is when 2001.com bubble happened. So day one, look at the smile on my face. Day two, I don't have that smile on my face because day two was 9-11. And everybody was calling in. The corner office guy was making 700 grand a year. Within 12 months, his income went to 70 grand, left the industry, and it was not pretty. He used to only come to the office at, you know, late after he would golf and he would kick back and would show up with shorts. He's making 700, life is great. We all looked up to him, pulled up in a 9-11 Porsche. I'm like, oh my God, what a great lifestyle. Day one, boom, day two. All of a sudden you see him panicking, fearing he's there early, staying there late, but it was too late. He thought that business was just going to go for it, wasn't ready for it. He paid a big price, scared a lot of people. A lot of people left the industry. And at this point in the game, I don't know what's going to be happening. My recruiter's calling me. I'm thinking about going back into the Army. Uh, I got started in the business. That's Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. But right after this recession that hit, where guys were afraid to pick up calls, I would sit there in the cubicles and listen to other advisors and stockbrokers answering phone calls to their clients. And they were shaking answering the phone because somebody on the other end was saying, what are we going to do? I just lost 20%. What are we going to do? I just lost 30%. They didn't have an answer for them. But during this crash, Dave Kirby had a meeting with us saying, if you can weather the storm while everybody else is scared, you can make a lot of money. Well, I didn't make a lot of money, but I made a lot of money for me at the time, which was $100,000. That's the first time I made $100,000. Now, this is me in a picture right there. This is me in... My office in Northridge, this is my second off, third office that I have in Northridge. If you see that earpiece, that's the old school earpiece. I'm wearing one of those. Is that a camel hair jacket? I am wearing a camel hair jacket. I remember those. And I'm in my computer right there listening to CDs and strategizing to see what is going to happen during the next market crash. Everybody was afraid. I'm late at the office thinking about what are we going to be doing next? This is 2008 recession. I had already uh, saved a half a million dollars. We started the insurance company a year after that picture was taken, October of 09. 
Insurance companies had nothing to lose at the time, but nobody was starting an insurance company at the time. And we grew it from 66 agents to 20,000 agents. And at this time is right before that, around 2008, 2009, is when I made my first million dollars. I went from $10,000 to $100,000 to a million dollars. And now I'm capitalizing off these marks and I'm noticing a trend. Most people were afraid. Most people will overreact. And those that are prepared, they're going to capitalize off these markets. So then let's continue. 2020, during that process, when market crash takes place, everybody was calling for financial assistance. My board called me saying, hey, we can go out there and get you know, a $4 million check right now from PPP loan. And we don't have to worry about getting it back. What do you want to do? I said, no, we're not going to take that money. And the board sitting there saying, but you have to realize there's nothing that we have to do. I said, I'm not taking that money. We don't need it. If I'm a capitalist, I'm not going to take that money. Well, listen, you put you paid a lot of taxes into the economy. I said, we're not taking a $4 million. The board had a meeting and they talked about this on stage at MGM Grand Arena. It says, most of you guys don't know anything about your, all you know about your CEOs, how great he's on driving sales and all this other stuff. We know from the board standpoint. Well, let me tell you guys something you guys don't know. We sat and tried to sell your CEO on taking $4 million from the government. This guy said, no. He never took the money from the government while everybody else did. And the audience had no idea. They thought this was just like a thing that we were talking about. We didn't take financial assistance. But why didn't we take financial assistance? Because I knew that season was coming. And I'm a guy that believes on being ready for market crashes that are coming because things are on sale. So it was a scary time, one of the scariest times for me because we're in Beverly Hills about to have a board meeting with De La Hoya, with Gabriel Brenner, and nobody shows up because they're afraid of COVID. This was the day that all of a sudden, you know, Rudy Gobert gave COVID to Donovan Mitchell and Donovan Mitchell was upset and Disney shut down, NHL shut down, NBA shut down, Universal Studios shut down. I'm at Universal Hilton, my wife, my kids and my nanny. I'm like, babe, we got to get out of here. I was in LA for 23 hours. Nobody showed up. We got on the flight. We went back to Dallas. I dropped everybody up. I came back to the office and I was there till three o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, asking myself, what the hell are we going to do when 99% of our sales that we do is face-to-face -face with a client and only 1% is Zoom? And we're third in California at the time, which means California had shut down everybody. And that was the whole essential, not essential time. If you remember this, what's going to happen with us? It was a very scary time. And I'm sitting there and the next thing you know, I'm doing Zooms and people are not used to selling Zooms. And what do we do? So we pivoted within months, we flipped this and we went from being face-to-face was 99% to 10%. We flipped it to 99, 90% became Zoom sales and only 10% was face-to-face. -face. And next thing you know, everything was discounted. People were afraid, what are we going to do? What are we not? At the beginning stages of it, when a market tanked, if you remember, I bought a couple of cards for $540,000, Wayne Gretzky, you know, 13 months later or so, I sold it for $2.1 million, okay? I was buying things left and right that were on discount because people needed cash at the time. So what's 540 at 2.1 million? in a, less than a year and a half, that's very good kind of money that you're making. But those types of opportunities are coming the next two years. I moved from six figures to seven figures to eight figures to nine figures, not in top line revenue, I'm talking net worth. So every time we're chasing the next zero. If you have 10K, you go to 100K. 100K to million, million to 10 million, 10 million to 100 million, 100 million to a billion dollars. But every time, everybody ought to be chasing the next zero because if you have a big vision and you got a good heart, you can do better things in life when you have your finances in order. So now, do you want to learn how to be able to do this to capitalize off the next market crash? Put a thumbs up if you want to actually be able to learn this kind of stuff, because we're just barely getting started. We haven't even talked about some of the things that's going on right now with the market. So let's go into it. How concerned should you be about the economy? How concerned should you be who's on this Zoom? Maybe you're watching this with your family, your spouse, your friends. How concerned should you be with the current economy? Well, recently, just five days ago, a guy on Twitter named Zach tweeted at Elon Musk and says, do you still think we're approaching a recession? This is what Elon Musk said five days ago. Yes, but this is actually a good thing. It's been raining money on fools for too long. Some bankruptcies need to happen. Also, all the COVID stay at home stuff has tricked people into thinking that you don't actually need to work hard. Rude awakening inbound. I've been saying this in my meetings for a while. And it's been a little bit of a challenge working with some of the guys that I work with, my own employees saying, no, we're heading into an era that everyone's gonna be working remote. I'm like, don't get it twisted. A 
David Solomon from Goldman Sachs who's saying everybody needs to come back and work out of the office and these bigger organizations. Don't let any of these Silicon Valley companies that are saying you can work on for the rest of your life. That is not going to slide long term because you need to build culture and people need to get back to work. All these things of people asking for raises three times in six months and getting it and threatening to leave the company if you don't give them the raise and people are afraid. And like maybe we need to give them the raise. All those things are coming to an end. If somebody's salary went from 55,000 to 120, the market's going to remind them you really only worth 55,000. They're going to get fired. No one in the marketplace is going to hire them. Hopefully they haven't increased their lifestyle to 120. And then they're going to go back down to getting a job that paid them 55. And then they're going to realize, don't do this again the next time comes around. There is a value in staying with a company and having deep relationship with an organization. No matter, no, no matter where you work with, whoever you work with, as long as the company's got a vision that they're going to a place and they're not doing fraudulent business, they're not doing anything like that, they're respectful. And maybe, you know, not everything's going to be fine. Not everything's going to be perfect. But if you know they're going to a place, stick around. Be a leader. Long term, it's going to benefit you. So even Elon Musk is saying that's what's going to happen in the market moving forward. So here's what Jamie Dimon from J.P. Morgan Chase said. He said, the Fed only has a 33% chance to avoid a recession. Let me say this one more time. The Fed only has a 33% chance to avoid a recession, meaning there is a 67% chance we are going to have a recession, no matter what Powell and the Feds do. And Jamie Dimon is not a lightweight. This is a guy that when he talks, people listen. This is a guy that Sandy Wow said one of the biggest mistakes he made is losing Jamie Dimon because he knew this guy was a player and look who ended up becoming that. He used to work at Sandy Wow. He could have replaced Sandy and been the CEO of Citigroup. He's saying this. So when he speaks, people listen. Now, let me continue. Carl Icahn, one of the most feared men in the marketplace, he makes CEOs shiver when he talks about them, whether it was AIG, whether it was Apple whether he went after Tim Cook, whether he went after anybody, when this guy talks, everybody listens. He said, I think there very well could be a recession even worse. Let me say it again. I think there very well could be a recession or even worse. Why would a guy that's worth, I think, $20 billion or so make a claim like that? This is billionaire Carl Icahn. Issue is ominous warning. There is no, there's no benefit to him to talk about this because he's going to lose billions of dollars if there's a recession, right? He knows that's going to affect him as well, but he's also prepared for it because he knows what's going to be happening. Let me continue. Leon Cooperman, whom, whom I had on the podcast six weeks ago, uh, he, we were sitting here and I said, Leon, how bad is it going to be? This is a $2.5 billion man. When he retired, Warren Buffett wrote an open letter about him. And he said right here, where I'm sitting, he said right here, if you haven't seen the podcast, he said, I, I think there's going to be a 40% correction. And the way he said it was very nonchalant. Yeah, I think there's going to be a 40% correction in the marketplace. Here's what he said. It's not written in stone, but that would be my guess. Okay. Leon Cooperman joins chorus of billionaire investors warning of a U.S. recession. So these are not people who just have a college degree. These are not senators and congressmen who want you to be calm and not worry about it. These are not people that work at CNN, Fox, or MSNBC who want to make you feel good. These are players that are playing the money game for not 10 years, not 20 years, 30 to 60 years. Leon Cooperman is 70 some years old. He's been playing this game for a while and he knows exactly what's been going on. They've seen the good, the bad, the ugly. They've also lost a lot of money and they've all made a lot of money. And this is where you can learn about what's going to, what's happened in the marketplace. Even Wells Fargo, who shouldn't benefit from saying this, the CEO warns US it's going to be a hit uh, 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 it's going to be a hard, it's going to be hard to avoid some kind of recession. It's going to be hard to avoid some kind of recession. Wells Fargo has a bank that is doing a lot of loans. They're going to feel the price here and they know about it. Here's what Bill Dudley, former president of Federal Reserve Bank of New York said, very, very unlikely the Fed can tame inflation without sparking recession. Former NY New York Fed chief says, very, very unlikely the Fed can tame inflation without sparking recession because that's what they're trying to do. Raise interest rates, raise interest rates, raise interest rates. Inflation keeps going up. Raise interest rates. Inflation keeps going up. Eventually, like, what do we do here? We don't have a choice. Are we just going to let it be? Are we just going to have to eat it? Because it's coming. So listen, it ain't going to be pretty. We have to go through this. This whole COVID thing without everybody got rich thinking it was real rich. No, 
we never got the side effects of 128 month economic expansion, keeping interest rates at zero, boom. Now we're experiencing the, the payback of us thinking oh, everything's going, it's going to be so great. No, you can't keep interest rates at zero for that many years. We're learning about it now. So should we be concerned about a market crash? 75% of Fortune 500 CEOs, this is a Forbes article, 75%, three out of four CEOs, Fortune 500 CEOs said this month that they, they're bracing for a recession. So I don't know what you do for a living. You may be a salesperson. You may be in real estate. You may be in insurance. You may be a parent. You may be a mother, a father. You may be a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer. You may be a small business owner. Fortune 500 CEOs, 75% of them said this month, they're bracing for recession. Why are they saying this? Why are they preparing for it? You think they want to say something like that, knowing their employees are going to get a little bit scared because a lot of them have their money in the company stock? So why are they being so open about it? Because the alternative is people saying who work for them, why don't you tell us what's going to be happening? Why are we prepared for this? Why weren't you prepared for it as, as a leader, right? So it's an anticipation game at this point. That one word, anticipation, is a word I've been following for since 2006, 2005. This part about anticipation, I, I'm in the insurance business. Today, I had a guest back on here, Dr. Peter Pry. He is the leading voice when it comes down to uh, nuclear weapons and EMPs and all this other stuff. He deals with the war side, right? And the whole thing we're talking about is what's going on with Ukraine, what's going on with Russia, what's going on with this, what's going on with the economy, what's going on with the market, what's going on with war, all these things that we see it on TV. You see it on TV every single day when you turn it on. I'm having the conversation with him, not because I'm thinking we're going to war tomorrow, but I'm having a conversation with him, anticipating if we do, how can we be prepared as a family? I mean, the insurance business. I sell insurance not because I tell the person I'm selling the insurance that you're going to pass away tomorrow or today, because when that day comes, you're ready for it. Everything about the market crash is that word right there, the anticipation game. If you're able to anticipate what's about to happen, you make the right moves, you make the right pivots, you win. If you don't, you pay a price, but the choice will be yours. Okay, so let me continue. Now, the question becomes, so what are you doing to prepare? Some of you guys might say, how do I even prepare for this? Well, we'll talk about that here in a minute. So what is market crash and recession? Recession is a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fallen GDP in two successive quarters, okay? So once again, a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fallen GDP in two consecutive quarters. So January, February, March, April, May, June. By the end of June, July 1st, that's Q2, we're gonna kind of get a signal to see, are we going into recession mode? They're either going to try to prevent that from happening with the numbers, which then will go to Q3 or maybe Q4, but it's coming in the next two to, you know, however many quarters. I said six months to 24 months, calculate the quarters. That's what we're looking at right now. Now, stock market crash is when a, 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 when the, a stock market crash is a sudden dramatic decline of stock prices across a major cross section of a stock market, resulting in a significant loss of paper wealth. Crashes are driven by panic selling and underlying economic factors. They often follow speculation and economic bubbles. For example, if you remember COVID when it took place, the market crashed and it recovered three, six months later. That wasn't a recession. That was a market crash. But a recession is two quarters in a row. And we're about to go into that mode right now. Why? Let me give you some forecasts here. First quarter of 2022, the American economy shrank by one and a half percent. So if it shrinks again, second quarter, we're in recession. That's why I said six to 24 months, okay? You just got the numbers right there. Q2, end of June. It says June 1st, but it's June 31st, uh, June 30th, which is July 1st. This could be the day America officially enters a recession. So meaning, my, my you know, anticipation saying six to 24 months, and I'm trying to be friendly, it could be as early as July 1st. So you could wake up July 1st. Once the numbers are in, you may see it on New York Times, New York Post, w Wall Street Journal, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, everywhere saying we're officially in recession. And once somebody announces it, then you're going to get politicians saying, no, we're not. No, we're this. No, we're not. So you have to realize they're running around right now on conference calls with each other saying, what do we need to do? Because June is the last chance we have to make sure the, market econ the American economy doesn't shrink or else we're officially in recession. That's what they're trying to do to manipulate the market. And there's only so much you can do with that. And we're going to see if they're going to succeed or not. If they don't, July 1st, officially, 
we're in recession. So brace for impact. You heard it here while we're talking about it. So what happens if this does take place? Uh, some companies go out of business. Some employees get let go. You're already hearing about companies saying we're going to freezing, hiring, firing 10%, 20%, 30%. You're going to see a lot of that taking place. Borrowing money becomes harder. Banks are not going to be lending money because it's just like, you know, a, a guy shows up in front of the office like, hey, you know, can you uh, please invest a half a million dollars into my company? And I said, really? Yeah, I have a startup idea. I said, okay, great. Uh, tell me about how you made your money before. I've never made money before. You've never made money before. I've never made money before. What are you doing right now? I'm struggling financially heavily. But if you give me a half a million dollars, I can make the startup work. What do you think I'm doing? What do you think you're doing? That small story that took place right outside yesterday when I'm going to lunch, okay? That story happens all the time, except the bank's going to say no, because banks lend money to companies that don't need money. Banks don't lend money to people that need money. That's how banks make money. If banks lent money to people that need money, banks would be out of business. That's why banks don't lend money. So borrowing money from banks is going to get harder very soon. Consumer spending decreases, okay? Stock market goes down. How down it goes, none of us can predict that. But the market's going to go down, okay? So here's a visual. This, this ought to give all of you guys hope, but let's look at this. So have you ever been to a forest before? So if you look at the forest right now, what do you notice? You'll notice that the tree all the way at the top, the big trees get all the sun. And everything else at the bottom, look how brown it is. It's getting no sun. The rain doesn't come fully on whatever's at the bottom because it doesn't get a lot of rain. The big trees at the top take all the rain, okay? Take all the sun, take all the best nutrients that they need to grow. But what does this, what does this mean? Every once in a while, forests naturally have their own wildfires. It's natural. It's not caused by anybody. But if you look at this, the, the few big trees that catch all the sun and rain, the few big companies that, are, uh, that hire the most good talent, it's hard for new younger trees to grow up. The big companies buy out or crush the competition and it's tough. Until what happens? Forest fires happen. Natural forest fires happen all the time. Not caused by somebody smoking cigarette, not caused by a arson, not caused by a young kid that goes up and throws a you know, fire, not, not by that. Natural forest fires happen all the time. It's a phase. And by the way, these generally happen five to 10 year cycles. Watch this, this is natural. Natural fires in the ecosystem usually occur every five to 10 year cycles. We're not talking stock market, we're talking forest. The U.S. economic cycles have lasted about five and a half years on average since 1950s. In recent years, we've seen closer to 10-year cycles, uh, hence the 128-month economic expansion, right? Okay, look at the faces on the right. Uh, market crashes are like forest fires. Look how ugly it looks on the left. There's nothing about that picture that looks happy and exciting and, oh, my God, this is so awesome that we're going through this. But this is what happens right afterwards. The smaller ones at the bottom that nobody was given light to that could have been bigger now have an opportunity again to grow tall and successful. And some of that may be you that's watching this right now, okay? You're now going to get attention during this time. You'll get the sun, you'll get the water, and you're going to be able to make an argument in the marketplace if you're worthy of being one of those bigger trees that gets all the light and all of that. And if you do it right, you'll stick around. If you don't, You'll go through this yourself 10, 15, 20 years from now if you go through some of the signs that we're talking about that the guys are going through today. So let me continue. It's not all bad news. Okay, Even though we're going to go through this, we're going to recover from it. So why are recessions a good thing? Bad companies go out of business, room for new companies to grow, starts a decade or, or, or so of growth, no more overpriced talent like we were talking about earlier, access to talent previously unavailable is now available. So guys who you would have never hired, now you can hire because fear sharpens listening and brings logic back to everybody. And people say, you know what? Next time I found a great company to work with and another recruiter or headhunter calls me telling me he can give me a $20,000 raise or $40,000 raise with a $50,000 signing bonus, I'm not going to take that because I love the company I'm with. I'm going to grow with them. I'm going to be a leader. And eventually I'm going to get paid what I'm worth because that's how the market works. This is what's going to happen after the two years that we're gonna go through. So here's what's happening today. A few things to be thinking about. 
inflation hits 40 or high. Look at the numbers to the right, by the way. Okay, eight and a half percent. Gas prices jumped 48 percent year over year. Okay, I saw a picture today from CBS uh, LA, CBS Los Angeles, that showed gas prices in LA were eight bucks. I was just in LA five days ago. Gas prices at eight dollars in LA, and I said uh, a year ago, I said gas prices are going to go to ten dollars. It's eight dollars right now. This is CBA, L CBS LA sharing this on their Twitter, Instagram, and their Facebook profile. So rental rates have increased for eight consecutive months. So this isn't just real estate people that are. This is people who are renting, who paying. They were paying sixteen hundred dollars eight months ago. Then it went to sixteen fifty, seventeen, seventeen twenty five, eighteen, eighteen fifty. That's sixteen hundred dollars, maybe twenty four hundred dollars right now. This is happening today. The average rent for a two bedroom home in the U.S. is about two thousand dollars, according to research from Rent.com. You ready? Up 22% from a year ago. Okay. Now, some of you may say, well, what's, what's $450? That's a lot of money to an average person that's not making that much money to pay. They used to pay $1,550 for rent. That $1,550, that $1,600 rent is now $2,000 a month. That $400 could have been car payment and car insurance combined, but nope, it's up 22%. Groceries are up 10% year over year. And while we're talking about all this stuff, let's look at some stocks and how the market's doing. So, number one, SP 500. Year to date, we're talking from January 1st to today. I'm not even going 12 months. I'm just showing you the last five months exactly as of May 27th. The S&P is down 13.31%. NASDAQ is down 23.17%. Uh, Apple is down nearly 18% just this year. Facebook is down 42%. Netflix is down 67%. Amazon is down 32%. Google is down 22.5%. Even Tesla is down 37%. These stocks are not bad stocks. These are not bad companies, but they're going through a market crash and soon to be a recession, okay? These could be good stocks to own. No one's saying these are bad stocks, but they're going through it. Some of these stocks are going to be on sale soon, next month, three months, six months, 12 months, 24 months, but they're going through it due to what the market is going through. Bitcoin, look how down it is. 39% Bitcoin is down, okay? Bitcoin is down 39%. So Goldman Sachs uh, advisors, they fly out and I have a meeting with them. Goldman Sachs folks, you know, they're the best of the best. Cream of the crop, they come and they tell me when the Federal Reserve raises interest rates two times in a quarter, historically, there's a 60% chance of recession within 18 months. This was a month and a half ago when they told me this. And I jump on a few Zooms that they have with their chief economist. They're also predicting these times to come where the market's coming around the corner. So. They're all saying, do we do bonds, treasury bonds, T-bills, do we buy bonds? The conversation is being had right now. It's a very different kind of a conversation when we're looking at all these stocks. So how bad will things get? Things to keep in mind. We've had a lot of fake success the last couple of years. Political uncertainty, midterms, and war in Ukraine is definitely not helping us. So one, we had COVID we overcame. We had an ugly election process that we went through. We had Afghanistan that we went through. We have Russia that we're dealing with. We got stuff that they were dealing with China. We have midterms that's around the corner. We have all these money that they've been feeding into the system that's leading towards inflation. Small businesses haven't overcome COVID and will now face a much bigger challenge. Some of them even were bailed out during COVID. They're about to go through it even harder. Many of them will. And the economic expansion after 2020 was pumped up by fake success. Meaning, so while this 128 months was going, we were about to go through this. COVID takes place. Next thing you know, we dump a bunch of money into the marketplace. 40 plus percent, some say, of all the money ever printed in the history of US was printed during COVID. 40%. That's not, we didn't work for that money. It just printed. It's not backed by gold. It's not backed by anything. It's just fiat currency. Let's print it. You can't do that. When you do that, you devalue. Things break when you do that. But we did that to try to bail out everybody. And we didn't know what the repercussions were. Everybody's like, oh, it's great. I just got $1,600 from the government, $2,400. This is great. This is awesome. I knew America was a great country because they were going to bail me out. No, that's not how this works. That's not going to be like that forever. The next crash could be my opinion. Some can say I'm wrong. My opinion. The next crash could be a dot-com bubble crash on top of the 2008 recession, both combined. I'm going to show you some data here for you to know what that really looks like. So Churchill once said, the further back you look, 
the further forward you are likely to see. So we're going to look back a little bit to help us educate on what this could look like the next six to 24 months. So I, I asked Kai to put this up on the PowerPoint because I want you to kind of see what happened with the market. Okay, The top 10 worst market crashes in history. Number 10 is what we went through two years ago. Okay, From February 19, 2020 to March 23rd, 2020. It lasted only, what is that, six weeks, five weeks? The market during that time dropped 34%. The duration was only 33 days. You know what you call that? Not a recession. It's a market crash because it recovered. If so the recession is two quarters, this was a market crash. It wasn't a recession. A 34% drop in 30, and lasted for 33 days. Okay, you may say, Pat, that's not a big deal. We're going to be okay with that. Fine, let's go to number nine. Number nine is August 25th, 1987 to October 19th, 1987. This was less than two, less than two months. The market dropped 36%. Look where it says on the Philadelphia Inquirer, Dow dives 508 points and panic on Wall Street, okay? So that's the ninth worst market crash. Eight is a dot-com bubble plus 9-11, March 10, 2000 to October 2nd, 2002. It's roughly 26.8 months. The market dropped 37%. So I want you to keep this one in mind because we're going to come back to this one here because it's similar to what's going on right now. World War II crash. This is from October 1939 to April 28, 1942. Market dropped 38%. Duration was 32 months. Panic of 1907 was from January 1907 to November of 1907. Market dropped 40%, duration 11 months. The constituents of Great Depression from September 7th of 1932 to February 27th of 1933, market dropped nearly 41%, duration 5.75 months, so six months. US, the US, the, uh, US went off gold standard, Watergate, OPEC, everything combined together from January 11th, 1973, to October 3rd, 1974, roughly 21 months, the market dropped 48%. Number three, Great Recession. But Great Recession was only 15 years ago, folks. This was only 13 years ago. Look at that Lehman Brothers. You remember Lehman Brothers? From October 9, 2007 to March 9, 2009, 17 months or so, but the market dropped 54%. That's a big number, okay? I remember that number from what happened during that time. I remember exactly what took place with one of my friends that I knew was doing real estate was making 400 grand a month. I went to his office, 30,000 square foot office space in Woodland Hills. He shut it down. I'm going outside of his office looking at the same. This is a guy that was making 400 grand every month for the last four or five months. And look at him now. He has to shut down this entire place. And that was November of 07 when he shut it down. I'll never forget that myself. Next, new deal programs were cut and taxes increased March 6, 1937 to March 31st, 1938. You see church, uh, you see uh, uh, FDR on the right, the market dropped 54 and percent, duration nearly 13 months. And big one, the Great Depression, September 3rd, 1929 to July 9th, 1932, market dropped 89.2 percent, duration was 34 months. Look at the sign on the car, $100 will buy this car, must have cash, lost all on the stock market. Let me tell you guys a story before I go to the next stop here, because there's some positive news after this. So I made an offer on a building um, nine months ago, 10 months ago. And it was a $15.1 million offer on this building off of Cypress Creek. We went and saw it multiple times. I liked it. It was a 100,000 square foot office space. I wanted to build that and uh, you know, put some money into it and, and, and uh, grow it. And uh, I made my offer and they came back and they said, oh, the guy that was already in it, he said he can get funding. I said, no problem. They said, but he has till Friday. If he doesn't close funding, then you're the next offer. I said, great. I get a call on Friday. What's going on on Friday? He got funded at 459. So he bought the building. I said, no problem. So I moved on. I bought two other buildings. No problem. So I got a call today of the same guy that bought the building, his realtor that sold me another building, not representing me, but he sold me another building on the other side. He called me and says, do you remember that, com that uh, building you wanted to buy for $15.1 million? I said, yeah, of course. Says uh, the guy who bought it, he's highly leveraged. He can't afford to put the money into it. And the construction loan he needs, he's not getting approved for it. He would like to sell it to you, but you don't have to pay 15.1 million. He'd like to sell it to you for 14 million. You know what I said? I said, I have an offer. What's the offer? 8 million bucks. Oh, he's not going to do it? No problem. You know why I said 8 million bucks? Because I know the season's coming. I'm going to have hundreds of other opportunities. Okay? Those highly leveraged, that sign with the car, they're going to go through it. Again, my opinion, 
These are my strategies. You can say, Pat, you're totally wrong. And I'm totally okay with that. I'm giving you my strategy, my opinion that's worked for me, that I went from a regular guy with a 1.8 GPA from a broken family who joined the army because I was not good in school. And I got out of the army wanting to be a bodybuilder. Luckily, I meet a girl named Jean Beer and I start working at Morgan Stanley Dean with her. Then I chose to stay in the financial industry and not quit. And then my life turned into what it is today. These are my philosophies I'm sharing with you. So these 10 worst market crashes I talked to you about, some of you guys may be watching the same, Pat, that's pretty scary, 89.2%. That's a big number right there. I know it is. So what's the good news? Here's what the good news is. What happens afterwards? After World War II, market grew 81 months straight. 81 months straight, the market grew. Okay, If you can weather the storm, you're going to do very well for yourself right afterwards. Vietnam War, at the end of it, 108 months, it grew. Reaganomics, Cold War, right after Jimmy Carter, it grew from 82 to 1990, 93 months. Tech bubble was the second biggest one. It grew from 1991 to 2001, 112 months. U.S. housing bubble, it grew for 74 months. COVID pandemic, 128 months. And that's when real wealth was made. But the key to creating and writing that right there, those 81 months, 108 months, 93 months, 112 months, 74 months, 128 months, the key to that is to make sure you're ready for it when things get heated, which is what we're about to go through right now. That's the key to this. So post-pandemic, 24 months is kind of what we've been going through right now. And it's not going to last for too long, but that's what we've been experiencing right now. So a few things you need to keep in mind when it comes down to news like this. GE got started in 1908. Terrible time to start a company, but that's when GE got started. Do you know how big GE is? Go look at what their revenue is and how big of a company they are, okay? Hewlett Packard got started during the recession, 1937. So, and then fear of World War II, Hewlett Packard gets started and look what they are today. Uh, Hyatt got started 57, 58 during a recession. Microsoft, 73, 75 during a recession. Airbnb, Uber, all these guys, Slack, all got started after 2008. So, so this isn't to sit there and say, oh my gosh, this is for you to be watching and saying, oh, if I come out of this, maybe you're not going to build the next Uber or the next Microsoft or the next whatever it is, but maybe you're going to be the hero in your family where one day your future great grandkids are going to have your picture on the wall in the living room to say, we are who we are because of you and the choices you made 82 years ago and that 82 years ago being today. Maybe that's who you're going to be the hero to based on the decision you make today. By the way, Maybe based on the decisions you make today, the 72-year-old version of you is going to be grateful that you made the right choice at 36 years old in May 31st of 2022, while everybody else was distracted, you stayed focused. That 72-year-old of you is saying thank you to you, saluting to you. Thank you so much for being disciplined and making the right choice that me at 72 years old, I can have my dignity and retire and not have to beg somebody or rely on the government to support me because you made a good decision today. So kudos to you. This isn't about you being the next billionaire. Some of you guys are watching and saying, I do want to be that. But for everybody else that's watching and saying, listen, I'm just scared and I want to make the right choice. What do I need to do? That could be you based on the choices you make today. So now, why are recessions a good time to start your own business? Number one, there's less competition. Most people are afraid. Number two, all in mentality. Some of you guys, if you're willing to put your head down and just go and start your own, it doesn't matter what it is. You go start your business with the right group of people and you're all in, you're not afraid of doing the work. It's going to benefit you. Number three, access to talent. Talent's out there today. Talent is priced at the real market value. It's going to be here very soon. And everyone's talking about it. Better rates, rent, vendors, partners, everybody, because they don't have customers. They're just happy to do business with somebody. When market crash takes place, relationships with companies that you do business with, if you're somebody that stayed soft, if you're still in business, they appreciate you even more. You build longer lasting type of relationship. I have many vendors that became partners because we've been doing business together since 2007, 2008, and we're still partners together. So eight steps to prepare for the market crash. A couple of things I want you to be thinking about. Get your paper and pen out for this one here on how to prepare for the market crash. Number one, anticipation. We talked about it already. It's coming. Don't be naive, okay? It's naive to say, I don't need an insurance policy. You need an insurance policy. It's naive to say raising kids is easy. No, you're naive. It's hard. It's naive to think, oh, I'm just going to get married. It's going to be like my wedding. No, no, marriage is hard. It's naive to think you're going to be healthy for the rest of your life and you don't take care of what you're eating. You're being naive. And it's naive if you don't anticipate the repercussions of what a recession can bring to everybody today. You have to anticipate it. And some of the stuff I'm talking about is specific to you. 
but some of it is general. Some of it, you got to go out there and say, I need to figure out a way how to get better here, whether it's going to a conference, events, being around other people, networking, the right communities to see what they're doing during this time. If there's anything you don't want to do during this era is to be alone, trying to go through this as a loner. That is catastrophic if you try to solve this whole thing all by yourself, thinking you have all the answers. Very catastrophic. There's a big difference if you anticipate and say, what are you guys doing? What's working for you? What are you guys doing here? How are you doing this part? You're going to events. You're going to conferences. because you're meeting other people, right? Like what you're doing right now with other people that are on this here, you're watching the chat. You're watching the communication. You're talking to one another. This is where you don't want to go by yourself. So you definitely want to do anticipation, number one. Risk tolerance is some people during these times will go extremely aggressive. And if you're going extremely aggressive because you want to go for everything, be ready to lose everything and have to get started back up at three to five years and lose three to five years. Now, you may be saying, I'm 22 years old. I can afford to do that. More power to you. But I'm just telling you right now, manage your risk tolerance. Okay. Manage your risk tolerance. Don't just, if you got a husband and wife, you got a wife and three kids and you know, you have a certain amount of money. Don't go out there and play aggressive thinking you got it all figured out. No, you got a wife and two kids, a wife and three kids. Be responsible on how you manage your risk. You know yourself. Don't try to act like somebody you're not. Manage the risk as you're going through this. Number three, carry cash. People have been asking, Pat, why do you keep saying cash is king when inflation is 8.3%, 8.4%? Isn't that irresponsible to do? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. But for me, I didn't say be 100% cash. I just said be ready because times like this, everything's on sale. There's going to be a lot of things on sale right now. And if you got cash, you can buy things cheap. Uh, folks, just so you know, WAMU in 2004, according to Fortune, I believe, it was in the article, WAMU Bank, remember WAMU, Washington Mutual, was a $330 billion bank. You know what Chase bought WAMU for after 2008, 2009? Have you ever looked this up? You can go search it if you want to. Chase bought WAMU for $1.9 billion. WAMU went from $330 billion. It didn't drop 10 times where they bought it for $33 billion. It didn't drop 100 times, which is $3.3 billion. It's 200 times they bought it for $1.9 billion. But Chase had cash to buy WAMU. You think that was a good move for them? They got all the branches, all the real estate, all the inventory, all the customers. Yes, they were ready because they had cash and they capitalized. Now, if Chase would have played as aggressive as everybody else did, they wouldn't have the cash. Remember Countrywide? Who bought Countrywide? WAMU, uh, Bank of America. Do you remember um, uh, uh, Merrill Lynch? Who do you think about Merrill Lynch? Bank of America. So many things are going to be picked up the next couple of years that are going to be on sale, and you want to make sure you have some cash to be able to do that. Not only that, you're going to sleep better if you have your emergency and all that stuff in place if you got cash. Next, avoid major real estate deals. I said this, my real estate friends and loan officers, they made a video. I mean, they're, I can't believe you said this. I thought you had our back. It's not about I have your back or not. Okay? This is not having your back or not having your back. I say what I think is happening. If you're in a position right now because you want to buy a house that you're going to live in for 10 years, who cares what happens to the market? But if you're buying a house right now in a real estate deal as an investment site for the next two, three, four, five years, I would, I would see if I can hold off a little bit because there's nothing I'm doing with real estate that's a short-term three to five year type of a deal. Me, me. But if you're buying something to live in it for the next 10 years, that, that, that I understand making that kind of a move. Uh, have a serious business plan in place while you're going through this. 5% uh, precious metals. Uh, some people say, why 5% precious metals? We don't know what's going to be happening. If all of a sudden, dollar takes a massive hit the next 24 months, and this thing gets pretty ugly. This is the time where all the gold experts that have been saying gold's going to 5,000, gold's going to 5,000, gold's going to 5,000. Maybe gold could go to 2,500, 3,000, maybe. Uh, this may be a time where the Peter Schiff's of the world are going to come out talking about, I told you I was right, maybe. If there's ever been a time for them to have that argument, it's this season. But I wouldn't do more than 5%, maybe even 2 to 5% is the number I'd be looking at. But consider some precious metals. Protect your career, meaning as good as you are right now, if you're a 5 or a 6 in your career right now, hurry up and become a 7 or an 8. If you're a 6 or a 7 right now, hurry up and become an 8. Hurry up and become an 8. When COVID happened, I sat there and I said, Pat, if you're an 8 and a half, you better become a 9 and a half ASAP. Because this thing's going to get ugly. You better hurry up and become a nine and a half ASAP. So whatever business you're in, improve yourself ASAP by getting around the right people, the right proximity, the right association that people are ahead of you, that are challenging you to get better because they have better strategies than you, better contacts than you. you got to figure out a way to protect your career no matter what you're doing. Take a time out and study your portfolio. Life is going so fast right now with all the 
you sit there and you watch TikTok, then you go to Instagram, then you go on Twitter, then you get the news, then you get an alert, then you get a text, then you go this, then you, that, then you almost have done. You don't even get a chance to take a time out and look at your life. You got to take a time out and look at your portfolio, your strategies. Is it working? Is it not working? After today's Zoom that you did, all the notes you took, I don't, I don't know what's going to be happening. Maybe I need to make some adjustments. Whatever it is that you're going through, take a time out and actually study your portfolio. So now, 10 steps uh, on how to make uh, millions during a market crash. Now that millions could be thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, whatever the numbers for you. Uh, number one is monetize fear. What do I mean by monetize fear? Do you know if I did the same Zoom, we got, I don't know, we're, at, we're lock and loaded at 49.99. Yeah, we got, we got, we can't get more than 5,000 people. So this thing is a forum. People are trying to get on right now. So I'm getting text messages here is you can't get anything more than 5,000 right now. But if we did two, two, two a year and a half ago, Everybody's making money with Bitcoin a year ago, $69,000 Bitcoin. You're all uh, NFT. I made hundreds. Th this Zoom would only be half on just because you're curious. It wouldn't be the number it is right now. People are afraid and they're willing to listen. When people are afraid, that's when businesses, if you have the right product, the right solution, the right presentation, the right character, the right work ethic, the right urgency, you're going to be able to monetize fear because more people will say yes to your points. More people will keep their points. More people will show up on time. More people say thank you for sharing this with me because we're at a phase of our lives that we really want to figure out a way what we need to do next. We need to pivot. A year ago, no one's going to say thank you. They're going to go, listen, honestly, I don't have 45 minutes. I got the point. Can we finish up? Today is the time to capitalize and monetize fear number two. The lazy, arrogant, and over leveraged will be filtered out. Let me say that one more time. The lazy, the arrogant, and the over leveraged will be filtered out. Just watch and brace for impact. You're going to see what's going to happen next 6, 12, 18, 24 months. The lazy, the arrogant, the over leverage will be filtered out. These are the guys that know everything. So when you talk, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. So, so let me, oh, I know, I already know. I, I, so I'm saying, I know, I know. Okay, sorry, man. I just don't want to say anything to you. You already know. Why don't you tell me? What do you know? Let me tell you. Great, go for it. They're going to be, they're going to be filtered out. Very simple. Remember how we started the Zoom at the beginning? We talked about social mentality, the student mentality. Those who stay in that mode, you're paranoid. You're urgent, you're moving quickly, you're studying, you're watching everything, you're in the right proximity around the right people that are winning to learn. Like I remember when I went to a, uh, a Harvard Business School OPM program, owner president management program, and it was $49,000. And at a time that I didn't want to spend $49,000, I'd much rather spend that $49,000 and hire an employee. And I spent $49,000 and I went to a Harvard program and I sat there for three weeks. I don't remember what any of the professors said. I don't remember what any of the instructors said. I don't remember anything the teacher said but we were with 144 other people like me that were C-suites from 64 different countries. And the guy that was my partner was a guy that ran the uh, Victoria's Secret Company in South Africa and New Zealand. He had 7,000 employees and six CEOs that reported to him. It was three weeks of me sitting next to him, gave me the best lessons of business. That $49,000 made me $49 million. It's eventually gonna make me a lot more money than that. It was worth the best investment I made because I wanted to figure out a way to get better. I don't want to be the lazy, the arrogant, the over leverage. Oh my gosh, I'm already making more money than I don't remember. Look them. No, those guys are going to pay the price. You stay in student mode and learning mode, you're going to have the advantage on your number three. Become bankable. What does become bankable mean? Let me tell you what become bankable is. Uh, here's what we've done over the last two years. Most companies gave raises because they were afraid people were going to leave. And then those people didn't deliver. So the CEO, the C suite executive, or the boss that gave the raise is sitting there saying, and this guy asked me to take him from 60,000 to 82, I gave it to him. But nothing changed. Couldn't count on him. Things wouldn't get done. He leaves at 4.59. He's always 10 minutes too late. Every day wants me to ask to work remotely or else this. He always has something going on. You know, he's going through this. He's going through that. Man. And you're still scared because you don't want to fire the guy. Okay? Or you don't want to do anything because he's going to ask for a bigger raise. Bankable. Something my dad taught me year, years ago. If you say you're going to do something, you better do it today. Because people are going to notice the difference. If you say you're going to get something done, get it done. That reputation you build, everyone's going to talk about it. People may not like you at times, but if you deliver on what you're going to say you're going to do, they're going to respect you. Respect's a very, very high currency, and that comes with being bankable. Everyone in the marketplace is going to get filtered out today, and everyone's going to realize, oh, so all the stuff you did was fake? Oh, wow, so you were, man, I didn't know you were that lazy. I thought you worked. Shoot, okay, cool. Oh, man, you're that leverage? I, I knew you were arrogant, but I didn't know you were this arrogant. Well, that guy over there that's so quiet, every time he says he's going to do something, he does it. Hey, let's give that guy a raise. 
Okay, let's give that guy another opportunity. Okay, let's give that XYZ. That's what happens in your bank over the endless time. Strength in numbers, be around the right people. Golden State Warriors are going to the finals. You know what they always talk about? Strength in numbers. Strength in numbers, strength in numbers, strength in numbers, strength in numbers. They don't talk about all strength in numbers. We got the right people. We got a deep bench. We got, if you're around the right squad of people, you're like our value tainers, our group, like today I had an elite mastermind. Seven of these guys are together. One of the guys that we've been consulting with, he's gone from an $8 million a year business to $32 million a year business. Now they're all friends together. They go to polo shows. They go to polo tournaments. They go to trips together. They're going renting yachts together, hanging out together. And they're helping each other's business out. But they met each other at a vault conference three years ago and they become best friends. So the valuetainment community, many of you guys are part of this valuetainment community. You're working together with because that's strength in numbers. Not even asking me, hey, John, remember that one time that Pat did that video strategy? How are you using this during time like this? Hey, what do you do with hiring? And fire? Did you notice what's going on over here? What do you do with this technology? What are you guys going through this? We're going through a struggle right now. Strength in numbers. The more people you're with that are going through the same thing you're going through right now, strength in numbers, baby. You got seven people in a group chat that you're all talking. You're all CEOs, founders, executives, sales leaders, million dollar earners, half a million dollar earners. You're challenging each other to get better by sharing your strategies with one another. Number four, strength in numbers. Number five, create a cause your company can rally behind. Years ago, I uh, uh, was sitting around trying to figure out, it's 2008, I'm making money, I drive a nice car, I'm dating a beautiful girl who's now my wife, we got four kids together, and I've traveled the world, 40 countries, all these different things, but I'm trying to figure out something that's going to get me fired up, and not fired up like, oh, I'd love to buy a Porsche, empty, I'd love to buy a Ferrari, empty, I'd love to buy a Lambo, empty, I'd love to buy a $30 million house, empty, all that stuff's going to happen, but I need something that's my heart that moves my heart. Do you know I spend a year and a half figuring out a cause I can get behind? Do you know how many people I spoke to that I respect them until finally somebody boom, talked to me like this? And I just sat there and I'm like, that's it. And that cause to me was capitalism because that simple concept of capitalism, you got a guy like me to lead you around to come to the States. And through that, I, was, I became financially free my dad now lives with me. He just turned 80 years old. When he had a heart attack at 44, the doctor says he's got 10 more years to live. He just turned 80 on April 10th. My kids are great friends with him. They're always around him. My baby Brooklyn is around him all the time, 11 months. Her best friend, she just walked for the first time. By the way, Brooklyn walked for the first time yesterday. She took three steps. I got on the video. I got the video just yesterday. It's freaking awesome that I got it. But these are all byproducts because something finally caught my heart. I became so grateful about how great of a country America is. That's for me. I became so excited about the fact that capitalism allows me to share my thoughts and my opinions. I can't say everything I'm saying right now that I'm saying in the Zoom. I can say this if I, was in, if I was living in Iran. I'm not free there. I'm free here. That became here. It wasn't here. It was here. And this has been my fuel since 2000 and July 15, 2009. I was dressed as George Washington at a JW Marriott event in Palm Springs, the event was called Saving America Doing the Impossible. My wife was dressed as Lady Liberty. I had another guy named Nick dressed like Lincoln. And we had four or 500 people. Then we said, we're going to save America do the impossible. And my heart from that moment on has been on fire. And it's not been about the next car, the next house, the next this, the next 100 million, the next 200 million. No, it's been the cause. For you, it's a great time to go a little bit deeper. I was talking to a guy today. I said, why are you doing this? Well, I'm making money. I said, that's not enough. Why are you doing this? What's, what, what excites you about? For you, this may be the time out part where you're going to sit there and say, what cause do I want to chase? Because if somebody's fighting because of this versus this, they're going to beat you. If someone's got a reason here over here, they're going to beat you. Great time for you to have a cause to rally behind your company. Cut the fat. Friends that are negative, that are taking too much of your time, that are constantly bitching, complaining, whining, cut the fat. You got certain relatives that are abusing the fact that they're blood to you and you love them, but you don't like them. Cut the fat. This is how I cut the fat. Cut the fat doesn't mean never. Cut the fat means we were talking once a month. Now we're going to talk once a quarter. We were talking once a week. Now we're going to talk once a month. I was seeing you every week. Now I'm going to only see you once every other month. That's cutting the fat. And then eventually, you're either going to say, why isn't Pat call following up my calls anymore? You would call me. I would call you back. Now I only call you back four times you call me. So I'm cutting the fat. Because every time I talk to you, all you want to do is bitch and complain about how life is. I don't want to hear it. It's like a virus. You have COVID. I get COVID if I'm around you. You got a flu. I got a flu. If I'm around you, it's a virus. Negativity rubs off other people. I cut the feather in time like this. Number seven, find your running mates. Find who you want to run with. 
go to places to find the right running mates. They're out there. People are like, oh, I can never find a spouse. You're going to the wrong places. They're not at the nightclub all the time. You can find the right spouse. You can find the right running mates in business. They're everywhere. You know where you find them? Where? When you go to a business conference with other people that are going there to change their lives as well. That's where you find them. You're sitting right next to guys and so what do you do? What business are you? I'm doing this. What business are you? I'm doing this. Two days later, you guys become best friends. You go to a restaurant, you eat, you're doing this. What are your plans? What are your plans? Damn. Where are you based out of? I'm in New York. Where are you based out of? I'm in LA. Damn, I'm based out of Poland. Let's figure out a way to do something together. Find your running mates to run with. A double down on positive distractions. Great time right now for positive distractions. What's a positive distraction? Exactly what we just talked about. These next two years, turn this into your positive distraction to add an additional zero to your life your network. Make this your game plan we're talking about. Number nine, equip your team with all possible audibles. You're going to watch a Zoom today. At the end, a hundred of you are going to be able to get the, get the, what do you call it? The PowerPoint will email to you. And I'm going to tell you guys about an event that we're hosting and uh, how revolutionary it's been for many. Well, when that takes place, you're going to hopefully have that time and you're going to say, huh, if this happens, we need to be ready for this. What tool we have for this? We don't have a tool for this. Well, I got to go find it. If this happens, what structure are we going to use for this to be prepared? We don't have it. We got to go create it to equip my teammates. Equip your team with all the possible audibles. You got to be, do, be able to do that. Number 10, increase your level of urgency. Listen, walk faster. Okay. Everything, move with urgency. Take care of your health because you're going to need the energy to stay urgent. Make decisions. Don't get off this thing here right now. Go watch TV. Don't. After this year, whatever you got, if you're, it's the end of the month. We're closed now right there. This is going to be the biggest, this is the biggest month in history of the insurance company I've ever ran. We've never had a bigger month than this month. We're going to end up doing nearly 20,000 insurance policies this month. We've never done, done that before. 20,000 insurance policies, the amount of insurance policies we did the first six years combined. Did you hear what I just said? The first six years come out. We're doing that in one month, potentially, depending on how fin- finish up today. March, if we've already written all our records out of the first 29, 30 days. Today's the day. So maybe after this, you're going to go back to your business and do what you're doing to close out. But whatever you're doing, be urgent about coming up with a plan. Don't go on the couch or go kick back and relax and not do anything. Use the energy, whatever way you're feeling right now, whatever thing you're thinking about right now, do something with it because within a day or two, this thing's gone. For some of you, within an hour, you forgot about everything we talked about. Take that massive action today. No more, I'll do it later. There's nothing worse than people that keep saying, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Half the people watching has gotten in trouble just because you keep saying, I'll do it later. Make a decision already. These are 10 of the moves I got for you. So now, one last piece of advice for you before we get into some of the things I want to share with you. Don't go about this alone. Whatever you're doing when you're going, uh, going through with this, go with people that also have similar visions, dreams as you. Don't do this alone. Find other people to be around who are also wanting to do something big with you. I'm a byproduct of 21 years ago, you know, going to a conference in San Diego after I got in the military with a guy named Tony. We got in the car. No joke. Funny story. I'm 23 years old. We have a choice of going to Hollywood to go to the club. It was Dublin back in the day. Some of you guys don't even know what Dublin is. I said, you, you, should we go to Dublin? And people are waiting for us. I said, if I go to Dublin, I'm not making any money. I'm losing more money. We need to figure out a way to make money. Guy calls us saying, there's an event going on in San Diego. If you guys come right, I can get you. And I'm like, San Diego is three hours away with traffic. Dublin, girls, San Diego, business, boring. Girls, Dublin, San Diego, business, well, boring. Uh, San Diego. Life changed. I went there, I'm like, oh my God. Never been to a business thing like this before. What was this all about? Boom. One minute, I'm just... Pat, going to the club, next minute, it's, this is going to be Patrick Good Dave, TBD, this, different human being. Don't go through this next phase alone. Remember, the future 72-year-old you is hoping you make the right decision today, you don't chicken out. You capitalize off this time and chase that next zero. Don't do this alone. So now, having said this, and this is still fully, none of you guys have gone up, we're still fully uh, booked on the entire thing. We have a conference that's coming up. I do this once a year, the Vault Conference. This next one we're doing is going to be at Miami, Florida, August 31st through September 3rd. If you've never been to this conference, you do this once a year. I started this in 2019 when we did our first in Dallas. The Vault Conference uh, will be at the Diplomat Hotel 
uh, uh, the, what you're going to learn when you attend the vault conference. By the way, people that attend the vault conference, those people you look at right there, uh, many of the guys in the front row, I can tell their story. By the way, the guy in the front row, right above session with the glasses on. Do you see that guy with the glasses? His head is tilt, tilted to the right. He came into the first vault conference. Uh, him and his brother, he was making $220,000 a year. Do you know how much their business is going to do this year? $30 million. That right there, glasses, head tilted to the right. The one sitting to his left, you can see to the right, with short sleeve shirt with white stripes. His name is Tim, if you can see him. That guy right there, he had no idea what he wanted to do. He was about to turn 40 years old. No idea what to do. He came to the vault conference. He was at my house three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Tim Arden. He'll tell the testimony at the vault conference. After one event he attended, with one decision and strategy we shared right there, he started making a million dollars a month just because of that decision that we talked about at the vault conference. That guy right there lives in a three and a half million dollar house, beautiful wife, his, I mean, his wife, sweetheart flew out. We had a great uh, dinner together at Casa D'Angelo. Special guy right there. He's, he's, we, have, we have kids, he sends me videos. We got a great relationship. The guy sitting to his left in a black shirt, right in front of the uh, red back with the white shirt. They came as partners. That guy right there, when he first started consulting with us, he was doing $9 million a year. Andy Berry, great family. I went to a polo uh, uh, tournament here in uh, Palm Beach with them. They took me there. We had a great time together. They're going to do $40 million this year. The guy to the left is a COO that he hired that changed the face of his business. All of these guys here, I can tell you stories with the relationship, especially front row, because that's CEO tickets. We sold out all the CEO tickets. But for the people that come to Vault Conference, CEOs, executives, salespeople, sales leaders, employees, investors, private equity people, they come from 100 different countries. They're not coming just from America. They're coming from all over the world. One guy flew 24 hours to go to the Vault Conference. The proximity and the relationship at events like this. So what do we cover at this event? How to build the right identity. The key is for you to cre recreate yourself with a new identity. I give you the specific structure on how to do that. Number two is positioning and capacity. How to position yourself leaving this event uh, where the marketplace sees you. Well, I'm sorry, I thought you were going this angle. Nope, you adjusted, now you're going over here. Wow, you changed the customer you were going after. Yes, that's positioning, right? And figuring out a way how to chase your capacity. Number three, the right values and principles that attracts the right types of people in your company, clients, agents, salespeople, executives, employees. The key with that is you, whatever your values and principles are, most people don't even think about that. Those types of people show up to your company. Problem solving and decision making systems, which we talk about specifically together. Systems and protocols, strategy and leadership for straight two and a half, three days. Vault conference, interactive case studies. I'll put up a case study and you'll go into a group. Look at the pictures right there. They're going through a case study together. By the way, the one right there, on the bottom with the red shirt on and glasses with a right uh, black sleeve, he runs a PNC insurance company. We've had many, many conversations together with him. You'll sit there and go through case studies. I'll put up a case study. What do you do if all of a sudden one of your employees went through X, Y, Z? I give you the facts. I give you what's going on. Then I tell you, turn into your groups of four or five and you guys talk to each other. 10, 15 minutes later, you stand up in front of everybody and you tell us what your solution is. And we all look at each other. Some of it's fun, some of it's laughter, some of it's humor. And then last time, one of the guys that was the president of uh, the restaurant, Red Robins, one of the presidents, he owns like 80 Red Robins, CEO, came on stage. And for 15 minutes, Adam talked about how we ran the Red Robins operation. Michael, absolute stud of a guy. And uh, we had a chance to have dinner with him afterwards. Great time. But these case studies that we go through, high level networking with like-minded entrepreneurs who follow by attainment, similar language, keynote speakers, I'll be making an announcement on who these speakers are in the upcoming weeks here. And today, for some of you guys that follow by Tim, you know, today's the last day to uh, uh, get the early bird special pricing. Prices go up tomorrow. Uh, uh, different tickets that we have that's going on right now with tickets. General tickets going to go from $747 today to $897 tomorrow. Platinum goes from $1397 to $1647. Executive tickets go from $1847 to $2197. Uh, founder tickets, we only got 30 left and CEO sold that. You can't buy CEO tickets. Those things go very quickly. Those tickets are $10,000 plus. They sell out within the first two weeks when we announce them. So, but all these tickets that we're talking about, general session just gets you. Look, the biggest thing I'll tell you is if you're married, you say, I can't afford any of this stuff. Figure out a way to get a ticket for you and your wife, your husband, and your business partner. Get in there. But if you want to move up and sit with other people that are higher proximity, you pick and choose who you want to sit with. Platinum, executive, founder, CEO, whatever it is. CEO, we go to private dinners together. Founder, you're also part of a private dinner and different guys that are founders. You pick and choose which one you want to be a part of. So now, here's what we're doing today that we will not be doing moving forward. This is the last chance to participate in this year. 
I wanted to add a couple bonuses here for today's Zoom webinar that those are the thousands of people that are still on here with us is the following. I spoke last week at a event in Las Vegas, okay, invited by Sean Connell. And he put an event together for video YouTube. Gary Vee was speaking, I was speaking, and Alex Hormiz, the absolute stud of a guy also that's coming up with speaking. And at this event, Sean invited me and I only do four speaking engagements per year. I don't have time to do it. I don't do it's not, I don't need the money. I don't want to do it, but I only do four of these per year. He was at one of my conferences I held in December or January. It's called the Business Planning Workshop, where I explained the 12 building blocks of how to write up a proper business plan. Most people have no clue how to write a proper business plan that produces emotion. It's too logical. And at the end of it, tickets range from a thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars for this event. At the end of it, some people got a chance to ask me questions and process issues together. I didn't know who Sean was. And Sean got up and he said, here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm doing. He runs a very, very successful. we got a YouTube channel with 2 million subscribers. And he started asking me very vulnerable questions. Hey, here's where I'm at. Wife, two kids, doing very well. Strong, devout Christian. Value guy, character guy from the moments that we shared together. And by the time it was done, I really enjoyed his values and principles that he lived. He runs a multi, multi-million dollar year business. Life. The room was filled with a thousand people in Las Vegas at the end, beautiful hotel. Afterwards, he calls Mario and he says, Pat, I want, uh, uh, I want to see if Pat is willing to be the keynote speaker at the event. And I did. And I went, I only do four of these. And I, he knows about this. And we went to it. This business planning workshop went from being one of the three seminars we hold to one that got so much positive messaging outside of the vault that, Everybody was asking about this business planning workshop. I only do this once a year. But here's what we're doing today. Anybody who registers for the vault, I don't care what ticket price you buy. You buy general, platinum, whatever ticket, executive, founder, whatever ticket price you buy. I'm going to give you this full recording that we sell today on the website for $11.97. That'll be sent to you. It doesn't matter if you get the lowest level ticket or the highest level ticket. Nine hours of this webinar will be sent to you for you to understand exactly how we come up with business plans on the way we do it. I'll send this to you. And it's a free bonus for anybody that buys a ticket today. Not 10 tickets, not five tickets. Anybody that gets registered today, you get the business planning workshop if you buy and get registered today being the last day. On top of that, as you get access to this, the business planning workshop, I go through a lot of different things and I cover that here with you. But it's the last chance for this year. And the last thing I want to say to you guys before we wrap up and you go out there and make that purchase is the following. The first 100 people that get registered today and take massive action, those of you who do, today's PowerPoint will be emailed to the first 100 people. FYI, I run a large insurance company with 20,000 agents. This is not a conference for you. This is for people that are not in my insurance company, everybody else. For those of you that are watching this, who don't work with me on the insurance side, and you wanna to go to the vault, and you wanna go attend this conference yourself, you saw the ticket prices that are out there. Um, for the first 100 people that get registered, Everything on the PowerPoint I shared with you today will be emailed to the first 100 people. Get a general ticket for you, your spouse, your business partner, platinum, executive, whatever it is. We will send a PowerPoint to you. Everybody who gets registered today is going to get the business planning workshop. But for the first 100, they're going to get the PowerPoint. By the way, this event's going to sell out. And you'll see when you attend it. And you'll see the videos when we post it. It's going to sell out, especially with the speakers that I'm going to announce. And none of you guys know who the speakers are yet. So once again, if you register, you get the business planning workshop. And on top of that, You'll get the 100 page, 81 uh, page PowerPoint that I just discussed it with all the numbers that have emailed to the first 100 people that register. So, this is the QR code that you can they click on the QR code and go to the website. Uh, take a picture of it to go to it. A couple other things while you guys are, you know, maybe asking some questions. Uh, one thing you need to know with the way I run vault conferences or any one of them, it's 100% money back guarantee. If you go to the vault, you come at the end of the conference, you never miss a session, not, ses not a single session I was teaching. You come back and you say, this was a waste of my time. 100% money, uh, I'll give back to you. 100% of it. By the way, for some of you guys that were at the SLS, I don't even want to tell you what happened. Some people were recording this. One of the guys, I just flat out gave him $3,000 to go home. I said, I'll give you $3,000. You have a, one minute to make a decision. You got to leave this room. I'm going to give you $3,000. Publicly on stage, everyone's watching this. Everyone thought I was kidding. Like, these are just things people talk about. I gave him $3,000. I said, you got one minute to leave. He took the $3,000. I lost money on that deal, but I only want to be with people that got a real plan to do something big who really want to bring the right values, the right principles to everybody else. We have a very unique community to get if you're a value team, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you wear that logo with the lion logo that you go anywhere in the world and people recognize that, 
value tenders speak to each other in a unique way. You'll see that when you go to a vault conference. So it's 100% money back guarantee. You come to the event, you got nothing out of it. Ticket, whatever you pay for the ticket, 747, whatever you pay, 100% money back guarantee to you. Uh, I believe in this event so much that I'm willing to put 100%, 100% of the money back into it. Uh, questions some of you guys may be asking, what if this event isn't for my industry? This isn't a industry specific uh, event. This is to anybody that's a founder, CEO, executive, salesperson, sales leader, or an employee that wants to you know, maybe graduate and take a leap of faith to the next level. This is an event for you. And more than anything else, this is an event for husband and wives that run businesses together and business partners that are trying to figure out a way how to work together. All of those folks, it's for you. So whether you're in real estate, we've had people from engineer, trucking, transportation, medical billing, uh, hospice, hospitals, uh, uh, loans, uh, pharma digital marketing, pharmaceutical insurance, investment, financial advice, it doesn't matter. People from uh, 200 different industries will be at this event and you'll meet them when you talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, uh, will this event be available virtual? Not this one. Uh, the business planning workshop is available virtual. This one in sales leadership seminar, it's only live. Uh, there's a very high value in proximity. This is only a live event that we do. Why do I need to attend this event in person instead of virtual? Because the whole purpose of what's about to happen when market crash is to make sure you're around the right people, to make sure you don't go through this by yourself. That's why. Uh, what if I register and can't make it? If you register and can't make it, you can sell the ticket uh, and you call our sales reps and they'll work with you. Uh, but uh, this is an event. And, you know, sometimes people buy the ticket and they come to the next conference, the next vault that we do. Uh, all I will sell to you, say to you is the fact that this is an event that is not a virtual one. It's a face to face. So. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in there. Will the content be the same as last year? Every year, the vault manual gets updated with new content. Every single year, we've done that for three straight years. So if you have the first vault, many people that went to the first one, go to the second one, third one, and fourth one. We're going to have people at this vault conference that have never missed a single vault conference ever before, but this will be the limited edition one specific for this event with lots of new material and new case studies in this vault four that we'll be doing in 2022. So last but not least, uh, for the market crash webinar special that we have, the four tickets minus the CEO. If you get registered today, the first 100 get the PowerPoint. And the first, uh, uh, anybody that gets registered today, you're going to get the free recording of the business planning workshop that we did last year. That'll be sent to you. And again, I want to recommend you to get registered with you and your spouse and your business partner. Do not come to this event uh, by yourself. There's a lot of power for you to, at the end of the event, you go up to your room and like, babe, what'd you think about what they said? What'd you think about what that couple said? What'd you think about what he said? Did you agree with Pat when he said this? What about that part? I feel like we're exactly going through this. And if you, it's you and your spouse and a couple of friends with their spouse, there's so much value to that. So do not come to an event like this by yourself. Once again, if you haven't yet gone to the website to get registered, put your phone on this, take this QR code, go to the website, get registered. And uh, I will see you in Miami. That's going to be in first week of September, which is less than three months from today. Is it exactly three months? We got June, July, August. Exactly three months from today, uh, from this week, will be the Vault Conference in Miami. If you've never been to Miami, use this as an excuse to also come and stay here for a couple additional nights to go see Miami. Find out why this has become the crypto capital of the world. And some of you guys that come here, depending on the ticket prices that you buy, you'll get a private tour to buy Tim and headquarters. You'll get to see the set that I'm in right now, the podcast set, what it's set up, all this other stuff. Uh, um, for some that are getting registered at different levels, we're doing an after party at my house. Anyways, there's going to be a lot of surprises that we're doing, but I can't wait to see all of you at the Vault Conference in Miami, uh, first week of September, August 31st to September 3rd. So use this QR code, go get registered, and I'll see you there because those of you that make the right decisions going into the market crash and recession, you're going to come out the next two to five years in a better situation. And then one day you'll be telling your story about how you added a zero or two to your net worth simply because the decisions you made today where you took massive action, unlike many people that say, I'll make that decision next week, next month, next year. And they continuously do that and wondering how the results don't go in their favor. I challenge you to make a decision and I'll see you guys in Miami here very soon. Take care everybody. This is the end of uh, the, the webinar that we have in regards to the market crash. Looking forward to seeing you guys get registered. The first 100 people getting the PowerPoint. And all of you guys watching the Business Planning Workshop will get registered. And I'll see you guys in mind. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.